I'm Tony D'Amato. I'm a professor and the director of the forestry program at the University of Vermont. And we're here in Mud Pond in Greensboro as part of a larger series of experiments we're doing throughout Vermont, New Hampshire, and New York. We're trying to figure out solutions for addressing the challenges that climate change, invasive insects and diseases, and other factors are affecting our forests and how do we manage those into the future. This project is a partnership between the University of Vermont, Vermont Land Trust, and the Nature Conservancy. Most of our experience with Vermont's forests is based on our experience in the past. And, and when we look at what's happening now and really what's projected to happen in the future, we don't have a management guide or a conservation booklet for how to manage Vermont's forests in the year 2050. And so our goal with a lot of these experiments and these partnerships is to come up with new ways to manage our forests that might be better suited for the changing and uncertain climate we have. This site was chosen because it represents a very typical condition in Vermont's forests. These beautiful, rich northern hardwood forests really are, are quite simple compared to what they would have looked like 300 years ago prior to pretty intensive European land use. One of the things that, that's really challenging when we think about climate change in the northeastern U.S. and certainly places like Vermont, it's a bit different than what we see, unfortunately, on a weekly basis from the western U.S. Big fires, large areas that are changing very rapidly. Here in Vermont, much of our change is quite slower. You know, the trees might be experiencing stress, hot, dry summers, or when they only get all the rain in a single event and not over the course of the growing season, can really create conditions that for tree growth and tree health really start to decline. So that cumulative stress really will predispose that tree to things like disease or insect outbreaks that over time, we start seeing the forests, for lack of a better term, is unhealthy. The, the trees have died back on their crown. We're seeing more trees dying. And normally in a forest, that's a natural process. You know, trees die, trees blow over, they're replaced by new trees. But unfortunately, the rate at which that's happening now in Vermont and elsewhere is much faster. There are tree species and there are forest conditions that are better adapted to those conditions. And so what's considered a stressful year for a sugar maple might be a really good growing year for a red oak or for a white pine. When we look at our future forests and trying to minimize the level of stress and in many cases anticipate those future stressors, we're trying to build in some mechanisms like different tree species or different ages of trees or a diversity of sizes that allows that forest to respond to that stress in a positive way. And so if one large sugar maple dies because of the cumulative stress of a drought, we have beneath it many smaller trees that can take its place and sustain some of those functions. Part of what we're doing besides managing the forest by, by creating more maple and more ash is also increasing the representation of other species that might be found locally in the landscape, but maybe not presently here on the site. So something like northern red oak, which was found here in Greensboro, but not necessarily here, is a species that we're actually going to plant in some places because we know based on where it exists and does quite well, is very well adapted to the future warmer and drier temperatures we might have. The goal here really is not just a, a one-year study. Forests change very slowly, and climate change, unfortunately, as much as we're seeing those, those impacts every single day, every single month, we don't know what the future brings. And so it's really important for us to have long-term studies on the ground that can allow us to monitor how is that forest changing, both with management actions as well as without management actions. 